Now, I did provide, uh, there's a stack on the table that just outside in the hall, uh, a sheet with material on both sides. Um, so I have a lot of my sources. I really recommend that you do your own work if you're, a, encourage you to scholarship. As a matter of fact, uh, when I was a graduate student at the University of California, uh, all the graduate students were hired by the university to work on uh, assembling a database. University of California collected, uh, basically we, we contacted every university, every library, any place that would have any old books and um, told them that we would pay money for a uh, photocopy of a title page of any book published 1800 or earlier. Now, Oxford University did it in the UK, University of Sydney did it in Australia, New Zealand, but University of California did it for North America. And I was one of those students just, you know, keying in the title pages and, and uh, accumulating a huge database. Well, now, um, as of about four or five years ago, everything in that database has been scanned and is available online. A little expensive, though, to get the access. Major universities can, I'd, I'd encourage you, the seminary here to pay the $1,500 or something a year to, to get access to, to that database. But, and the neat thing about it, now when I did my political stuff and my scientific stuff, I just had to dig through archives. And because we already had the database, uh, we just had the titles. And so I had to travel all over the place and dig through archives and go all over the world almost to find some of these, maybe only one copy and it's in, you know, a, a Cambridge University library or someplace like that. But now, it is all available online, it's been scanned, and it has a database. And so in 2007, that, all that database had just come out, and so I decided to dedicate the next seven years, here we are seven years later, um, uh, in, in accumulating everything. Now, all you have to do, I mean, if you want to do this and you have access to the database, is type in rapture. Every book that has the word rapture will pop up, and, and, and then you go to that the, the, that book and it'll tell you what pages the word rapture is on and it's highlighted as a matter of fact. Um, so I, I mean it's a lot easier now doing research than when I first started. Um, and then I went and did, I typed in uh, dispensation and uh, tribulation and antichrist and uh, as I say the past seven years this is about all I've been doing and this is the result of those seven years of research and hopefully a book that'll be coming out soon. Um, but anyway, let's start with this. Um, I typed in the word wrapped and I found, actually um, the first one that I found was in 1420, but there is an, an earlier one that I was able to find also. Actually, I found that one by just English uh, Dictionary of English Language. Uh, showed me that the first uh, time that in English language the word wrapped was used. Now, rapture of course is the noun, wrapped is the, the verb. Um, was in the 1320s, but very early, I mean when English, Vernon Manuscript, 1320s, that's about the time of John Wycliffe and Canterbury Tales. Anyway, anyway um, uh, and of course then the word rapture when it first shows up, these are just the early ones, there are plenty of later ones, and even left behind, these six sources here say, now when this rapture takes place, you know, um, uh, you know, when you take off for heaven, your loved ones will be left behind, and they will say, what am I in for? Uh, and my point is, they were people writing like Tim LaHaye is writing today, there's nothing new under the sun. Um, and you can go on with this too, but, um, uh, and then there's more, uh, again, you, I can move on, you can study the sheet. On the back side of the sheet is 16th, 17th, and 18th century authors who were philo-Semitic and expected the, the restoration of Israel. In other words, one of these days, the Jews are gonna go to come back. And, and as the Ottoman Empire was starting to crumble, um, the Austrian Habsburgs had taken uh, um, uh, Hungary and they were moving into like Serbia and expanding into the Balkans and you saw the weakness of the Ottoman Empire and many of the Christians were saying, whoa, with the Ottoman Empire weakening, it's gonna give an opportunity for the Jews. In fact, James Bishenow, a Baptist pastor in the 1760s said, you know, one of these days when the Jews do reestablish Israel, 1760, this is almost 200 years before Israel was established but they're all expecting the restoration of Israel. Why? Because that will set things up for the last days. Now I thought Hal Lindsey or Darby came up with that, but centuries before we have it. Um, and uh, you can, again, my recommendation is you find these authors, you do a search on them, you try to get to their material and read it and check out and see if I'm accurate or not. And then after that, use of the word dispensation. And my, by my research of who was using, now, not just a special dispensation from the Pope, but 
that dividing up sacred history into dispensational periods. And boy, some of these names you'll recognize. Isaac Watts, for example, talked about seven different dispensations. And uh, we know him for his hymns. But uh, any, actually, I've read all of his uh, ri- uh, letters as well, last time I was in London. Anyway, I love these two uh, 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 title pages where you see the saints rising from the graves and going up. To, this is from 1660, and this is from 1701. In fact, I think this will be the title page of my book, and I'll just take these letters out and you know, put my title, because then you, you, there's the rapture. They're coming out of their graves, and, and here's Christ you know, and the angels with their trumpets. So, uh, in other words, these ideas go back then. Now, use of the word rapt in the 14th, 15th, and 16th century. Anti-dispensationalists, of course, insist the rapture was begun by Darby, but rapture, of course, simply is the Latin word rapio, or caught up, and it was used in the Vernon Manuscript uh, when he was rapt into paradise. That was in reference to Paul's ecstatic experience. But, of course, John Lingate, an associate of Chaucer, said that when the brethren twain, in in fact, This morning in chapel, we heard about the different aspects. And the brethren twain wrapped into heaven were the witnesses in the book of Revelation. In fact, everything you heard in chapel this morning was was used in some way by these authors that I have discovered. So I have to say that um, Ed Heinsohn didn't come up with anything new either. (laughs) Okay. Um, But anyway, I, I should claim that I really didn't come up with anything new because I actually, I began my search with, I'm not a theologian, I'm a historian. Yeah, I have an MDiv, but that's not a, I'm not a theologian. So, um, but anyway, um, uh, I just did it as scientifically as I could by just accumulating all this stuff. I didn't read any secondary material. I, I didn't even read any of your works until five years into my, my own research, mainly for checking to see if I was on the right track. Uh, at Talbot Seminary, they said, you do your own exposition of the scriptures, then you check the commentaries later. And that, that's what I brought into my own research as well. Um, but anyway, I could continue quoting some of these, but we've got to keep moving. Um, uh, let's talk about Thomas Drake. Actually, I had pronounced it Draxa, but uh, his descendants took the name Drake, so I'll just call him Drake. Um, just as God saved Noah and his family in the deluge, you'll hear this from pre-trib people too, uh, that he will remember and save them when the world besides perishes. Look at Lot and Sodom. Lot was taken out of Sodom before the destruction. No one his family were taken out of the old antediluvian world before the destruction. And um, Drake exhorted us to watch and pray that we may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come. Quoting scripture, of course. Um, Enoch and Elijah, in like manner, were wrapped alive into heaven. And the word wrapped... They say rapt isn't in the Bible. Well, according to Drake, rapt is in the Bible. Um, And that was in 1613, about the time that the King James Bible was being written. Um, uh, Accounted worthy to escape all those things and stand before the Son of Man. This is Drake. Uh, Robert Matone, um, an Oxford grad Puritan minister, believed that there was more than just one pre-conflagration rapture. Uh, um, But... Why shall the elect only be gathered together and the rest left behind? Notice that word left behind. They shall be left either to perish in that great destruction, which shall come upon all nations that fight against the Jews in the battle of Armageddon. So um, whom our Savior shall then redeem. So in other words, you've got the rapture and then you've got all these nations going against the Jews who've been reestablished into Israel in the battle of Armageddon. And then at the, in the midst of the battle of Armageddon, the saints who have been raptured and have gone somewhere, right? Then come back again with Christ at the Battle of Armageddon. So that's that double coming of Christ. Um, Baton's pre-trib rapture before Armageddon. So he saw that there were, might had to be two comings of Christ. One was at a time of general security when there were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, and everybody was caught by surprise. We still have to deal with us ourselves in scripture. And there's, Wait, if Christ comes back at the Battle of Armageddon, then we would know that, the, that Christ was coming back soon. I mean, we're in the middle of the Battle of Armageddon. But, but, the, but what about that surprise? I mean, a time of general security, eating, you know, marrying, giving in marriage, not warring and fighting, and then whoosh, the rapture occurs. 
And then later, of course, it talks about how then, after, in fact, many of these author, authors tie in the rapture, the appearing of Christ at the rapture with the appearing of Christ in the sky and the Jews then look upon him whom they have pierced and mourn. And many of them say it's at that time that the Jews are converted when the church is taken and then the Jews return to their land and establish Israel. But this makes the Turks and the Arabs really upset and hence we get the Battle of Armageddon and all nations. Uh, I kept thinking that if all nations go against the Jews, at least America won't be one that would do it. But now I'm starting to worry that maybe all nations will go against the kingdom of Israel in the last days. Anyway, uh, so the returning of the Jews into their own land shall be the occasion for this warlike assembly. Two comings, a time of peace when the church is taken, a time of war when the church comes back with the Lord. That secret rapture and then, the, not too secret because the Jews will see him in the sky. John Archer, Cambridge grad, lawyer and member of parliament uh, during the Cromwellian period. Uh, that he put 40 days between the rapture and the kingdom, primarily because he said Christ rose and he was on earth for 40 days before the ascension. In like manner, there'll be 40 days between the rapture and the second coming in the battle of Armageddon. So he doesn't have a seven year tribulation. I think he's only got a, a 40 year period, but he ties that into how long Christ was on earth after his resurrection. Jeremiah Burroughs, you know, a lot of these guys were Westminster Assembly divines. And when I talk to our Presbyterian all millennial crowd, and they like a lot of, the, I mean, they, they read Jeremiah Burroughs, they read a lot of the other people I will be mentioning to you today. Um, and I mean, some of their favorite people, but they don't read their eschatological works. And I really have a lot of fun with these Presbyterian all mills who love these Puritan fathers and letting them know that these Puritan fathers they like wrote on eschatology and that kind of shatters them a bit. But he basically says the saints will be rescued from a great tribulation in the midst of a great tribulation. They will be taken out. Then will come once again the battle of Armageddon. I can read some of the, the first thing that shall be done in this great day of Jezreel shall be the deliverance of the churches. The first thing is the deliverance of the churches from woeful affliction, which will be a little before what else happens. Then there'll be a time of troubles, uh, but at that time thy people shall be delivered. God's appearing gloriously for the delivering of his church, a going up, a rising, and they're going to meet Christ as the bridegroom, and that's where the wedding supper of the Lamb takes place. And then after the wedding supper of the Lamb, and he even tied in the, um, uh, the like uh, Dr. Henson did this morning, was uh, the uh, marriage supper of the Lamb, the preparing of the bride in white gowns, and then in white gowns they come back again with Christ. Um, Jeremiah Burroughs. And he was the rector or the speaker of the Westminster Assembly that formed the Westminster Confession. F. Ephraim Hewitt. Um, again, I had to do a little work to find out what the name became a few generations later from Hewitt. Anyway, he, his grave is the oldest grave in Connecticut. And he was a past, the first pastor of, of the first church in Hartford, Connecticut, I believe. Anyway, Christians are delivered and preserved. The kingdom then is given to the Jews. So the time of the Gentiles has been fulfilled. The, ch the church takes, takes off and now God's attention is not on the church anymore because they're raptured. God's attention is on the Jews. The kingdom is given to the Jews. They settle Judah. Gog and Magog then come and invade. Often Gog is the Turks and Magog the Arabs. Uh, several of my sources had the Turks as the king of the north and the Arabs as the king of the south coming in at the battle of Armageddon and tying you know, Daniel into revelation and, and whatnot. Um, and Christ's bride then returns to earth with Christ to set up his kingdom. Um, and I guess I can, I can sum up, you can read those on your own to see that, uh, you know, the idea of the restoration of the Jews is tied into to the rapture. Elizabeth Avery, it's interesting for, for you women, uh, E. Avery is what all the texts say. Mm -hmm. Every time there was a female author, she just put her first initial. And, uh, so I had to do a little work to find out who it was, but it's Elizabeth Avery. And in the 1640s, the saints are taken out of a great tribulation to a place of safety. I'm not sure she has the rapture, but it, it could be that they were just removed, similar to maybe um, uh, Philip being you know, whisked away after the uh, Ethiopian eunuch, like we heard this morning, but whisked away to a place of safety, a resting place for three and a half years. Um, uh, you, so, 
I'm wondering I, uh, whether she's talking about a mid-trib rapture or maybe it's just a three and a half year uh, tribulation, right? But anyway, uh, then Christ will gather his saints and come in glory. He will gather from all, all his from all places in the midst of the great tribulation uh, to a place of safety. Some of my authors said the place of safety was the wilderness. They do get that from Revelation. You remember the woman taken to the wilderness. Um, and, uh, and some... Some would tie that wilderness to America. Now, you know, there are some theories that the founding Puritan fathers uh, thought that they could start a new millennium in America. And I've run across this nonsense. I have yet to find any Puritan father in America that claimed that what they were doing in America was starting a millennium. In fact, all of these Puritan fathers believed that Christ would come back to Jerusalem. Some of them thought that maybe America was the wilderness where they would hide from the Antichrist, Rome, for example, in most instances. Uh, and that, you know, that's why they were going to America because they were hiding in the wilderness until the, the rage of Antichrist is over. Um, which, but, uh, but I've never found anyone that said that their hopes were in a, a post-tribulational, a post-mill American millennium, for example. Um, anyway, uh, let's move on. Uh, Nathaniel Holmes, Oxford doctor, um, Congregationalist pastor, he b- taught that the rapture to heaven was before a conflagration and the Battle of Armageddon was included in that conflagration. So, I mean, how long w- was the church in heaven? He said as long enough for the bride to get married, maybe prepared too, uh, but also enough time for Gog and Magog to get their armies together and march on, Jeru- on, on Judea, on, on, the, on, on, the, on a reestablished Israel. All mankind shall rise in their order. Christ, first to rise, right? Then the rapture of the saints, this is the word rapture of the saints, into the clouds to be their present translation into heaven. Um, and they'll, of course, meeting the, the, their Lord in the clouds rather than to wait for his coming, preserved during the conflagration. And then he goes to Noah. Noah was rescued before the flood, so the church will be rescued before the, the conflagration and the battle of Armageddon. Um, I guess we'll have a bird's eye view of what was, what's going on in the last days. Uh, homes on a Jewish kingdom while the church is in heaven. Once again, the church is in heaven and the Jews establish their kingdom. The Jews become the center of God's plan during that, you know, interregnum, uh, in that in-between period. Um, anyway, you, you can read yourself on that. Uh, let's, I've got to move on. William Aspinwall, I have so many names, I have to, it, it's overwhelming how many people taught this. Um, he actually left Boston with Ann Hutchison started to go to Rhode Island, uh, following uh, Roger Williams, of course. And, but he did return to England when the Puritans took over and got rid of uh, King Charles I. Um, and he was the fifth monarchist. I've got a chapter on the fifth monarchists. And uh, they basically believed that, you know, the, the four monarchies uh, uh, mentioned by Daniel, or the four parts of the statue, the four animals coming out of the sea, um, were the, f- the first four kingdoms, the fourth one being Rome, but the fifth monarchy would be Christ's kingdom. And of course, they had just gotten rid of Charles I, a crypto-Catholic, um, and they felt that they were in the midst of the Battle of Armageddon in England and that they would bring in Christ's kingdom on their own. And so I would warn you uh, uh, that maybe we should wait for Christ's coming before we set up Christ's kingdom. But they felt that they, without Christ's coming, would set up their kingdom. I, the dangers, I would say, of post-millennial theology. Um, but anyway, so he was one of those, but he still believed in a rapture. Come up hither, and you will see them ascend into heaven. You shall be safe from the commotion and the earthquake that will ensue on the earth. Once again, rapture, horrible things, and then return. Um, I love Captain John Brown. He was actually the captain of a merchant ship every year le- leaving England and going to Annapolis. So he was... Uh, Anyway, uh, he was not a military captain, a a naval captain, but just a captain of a a ship. But um, anyway, he said the 144,000 on the earth are after the rapture. The church would be in heaven at that time. So the 144,000 can't be the church. I know Jehovah's Witnesses claim. I've talked to some that say I'm one of the 144,000. But he taught that the 144,000 won't even be revealed until after the rapture. And the 144,000 will be Jews. It's very clear in the book of Revelation that they're from the 12 tribes of Israel, right? And so 
Um, anyway, so f- basically you have the rapture, then you have the 144,000 and the Jews cult. Uh, they then return to Judea, they rebuild Jerusalem, they rebuild the temple. The Antichrist rages against Israel and the Jews, but all this time the church is in safety in heaven. Um, the 144,000 cannot be said to be the lamb's wife because the lamb's wife is up there for the wedding. And, and the 144,000 are on earth converting the Jews and perhaps the rest of the world. Um, they are upon the earth after the said spouse is taken up. So once again, you have that separation of rapture and then events going on on earth while the church has been, uh, it was up in heaven. Uh, the calling of the two tribes of Judah and Benjamin to Jerusalem. Then the city of Jerusalem is rebuilt. But this is all after the saints have been taken up. Again, when, um, I don't know the date, their last one had a date on it, but 1640s, I know that. Um, so Captain Brown's order of events in the last days. First is the falling away of the churches from the truth. Then the coming forth of the whore of Babylon, which he referred to as Rome. Uh, the gospel of kingdom preached to all nations. The calling of two tribes, to return to Israel first. The, ten tri- the other 10 tribes come later, after the rapture. Um, and if he identifies the Antichrist as a raiser of taxes. <laughs> Think about that one. Anyway, um, that vile person, the man of sin, the beast. Of course, then the Jews will be besieged, the sanctuary trodden underfoot. There'll be a time of terror and whatnot. Um, and this is the 144,000 are upon the earth after the spouse has already been taken up in the rapture. Um, I'm spending too much time on Captain Brown, but he's just loaded with good stuff. Um, uh, The tin horns and the beast will do before and after, so he's still, the Antichrist is still raging after the saints are taken up. I'm thinking maybe he's mid-trip personally. Um, But before the saints are taken up, of course, things are, but after the saints are taken up, of course, the, the Antichrist takes Jerusalem and trods into the temple. There's the abomination of desolation in the temple and whatnot. Um, but that's after the church is taken up. And then the late tribulation, from the time of the saints being taken up to the time of the beast, being cast in the lake of fire, will be a short time. Uh, not quite four years. Sounds to me like three and a half years. or mid. In fact, that was really the, 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 the most predominant position was a three and a half year tribulation or a, or a mid-trib pr- position uh, at the time. Um, <sighs> James Durham's order, by, by the way, where did they, this all begin? Let's take a break here for a minute. Um, obviously this is all before Darby, but the, nothing really exists before the Geneva Bible. And I was wondering, who's the earliest and where, where do these ideas flow from? And then I read it, Ed Heinsohn's uh, doctoral dissertation, where he ties it into the Geneva Bible and the notes in Romans 9, 10, 11. Not, not the Bible itself, but the notes that came, it was an annotated Bible and there's, there's marginal notes. And he, they tie in, in Romans 9, 10, 11, to a restoration of the nation of Israel. And that's where these people all start getting these ideas and they all build upon each other to a crescendo, which I believe culminated in Darby. Um, my next project, though, is to try to, to read letters of these men. Uh, there's actually, all their letters aren't online, but uh, there is a computer in Her Majesty's Record Office in London that has every letter written, you know, before 1800 or so, and where they are. And they're, they're not scanned into the internet, but I'm going to be digging through archives again this summer in London to read every letter written from or to any of these men to try to find more information if I can. That's what I'm doing next. Anyway, um, James Durham. He was uh, a graduate of St. Andrews, Scotland, a covenanter, Scottish covenanter, uh, and a professor at Glasgow. Uh, He was actually captain in Cromwell's army as well. And he talks about this preparation of the bride, which he identifies as the church. Um, The first resurrection where the bride will be clothed in fine linen, the marriage supper of the lamb has come, uh, the church's marriage with Christ, which is the same as the resurrection, right? But then after the, br- the, the bride is, after the wedding of the, uh, of the lamb and the bride takes place in heaven, then the lamb's order and army, that is that same, you know, the church who's been clothed in white will then be the church. That, in other words, one day the saints will come marching in, but it's after 
their marriage to the lamb. And it is exactly what he says here. After the lamb's marriage, a flourishing church able to send out armies, not only angels and saints glorified, but such as the church, the church is arrayed in fine glory and marching in to bring in the millennium. John Birchenshaw. First is the rapture, then the destruction of the whore, which is always identified as Rome. And, and many of them, were, where Luther and Calvin in the 16th century always identified Rome as Antichrist, these in the 17th century are identifying Rome as the whore of Babylon, but Antichrist destroys the whore of Babylon, so Antichrist can't be the whore of Babylon. In other words, Rome can't be the whore of Babylon and Antichrist both. Um, but Rome will be destroyed by the Antichrist. So many of them are then saying, well, who's gonna destroy Rome? And many of them are saying, well, maybe Antichrist is Islam. I, that's a pretty prominent thing with these two. And, and therefore, Rome will be destroyed by Islam. Um, anyway, just something to chew on. Uh, we can all speculate. Oh, I should say I have an appendix of dates set. Please don't say debt, dates. I have about 85 different dates. I have a, the, you know, in, in my appendix the date that they set the date and then the date where they said it would happen. And 80 of those 85 are wrong. There's five that are still future. The next, one, the next date that I have is 2016, someone said, that's the date the Lord's coming back. So you got, what, two years. But can I tell you, the other 80 of the 85 were wrong, I bet you that guy's gonna be wrong too. <laughs> and we could talk about date setting, but uh, something that I had a lot of fun with is collecting that list of all the different dates that were set. Um, Anyway, um, where's it? John Birchenshaw. The, the Lord will put it into the hearts of the Jews, having seen the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. So at the rapture, Christ appears in heaven. The church is taken, once again. And then the Jews will be able to see Christ in the sky and mourn. So they tie in that they will look upon him whom they have pierced from Zechariah with, with the rapture. And of course, that's exactly when then the you know, the time of the Gentiles is over and then the time of the Jews comes back again, that last week of Daniel, which, uh, of course, none of these have talked about the week of Daniel yet. I've, I've got someone coming soon who, who was the first to say that last week of seven years of Daniel has to be the tribulation. He's actually a bishop in the Church of England, but we'll get to him in a minute. Um, all nations shall be brought against Jerusalem to battle. Among them, the Turks, of course. The Turks are, in, in a way, almost the leader of this because they're Gog, according to most of my, uh, of my sources. Um, now the Lord will come to give his saints possession of their own land. He will come with all of the saints. The nations will be destroyed, and blah, blah, blah. William Sherwin, boy, he wrote about 12 different uh, short books during the 17th century, and uh, uh, all with the rapture as the theme. Um, and uh, anyway, uh, promoting the rapture and millennium after so many hundreds of years of its laying hid, that the rapture and millennium had been laying hid throughout the middle, medieval period with, with, many of them are actually said during this time, Antichrist took over the church, you know, at the time of Constantine, but we've been able to set ourselves free from that and, and, and go back to true biblical teaching which had been lost. And, and that would be in, in their eschatological scheme. The saints at the sounding of the last trumpet at the end of the world shall be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye, wrapped to meet Christ in the air. Then the end of the fourth monarchy, Christ uh, in an instant delivers the faithful, then alive from a temporal destruction and the ruin of the Antichrist, r rescues them from Antichrist, just like the flood in Noah's time and the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. In like manner, the church will be rescued just in time. He will raise all of his people to reign on earth with him. And all the ancient fathers acknowledged this, he insisted. Justin Martyr, Irenaeus, Tertullian, all taught this. But when Antichrist took over Rome, it was lost, and we've rediscovered it. Um, uh, anyway, uh, even Augustine held to it in his, in, as a young man and then drifted away into uh, all millennialism. Uh, anyway, um, uh, and so this idea, so many hundred years of it lying hid for the most part of the church, but it is a doctrine to be embraced by the faithful, right? Um, knowing that the rapture to Christ will come. Sherwin had three personal comings of Christ. The, in, the, in order, first the tribulation, then the Lord's coming for the resurrection, the rapture. <clears throat> and of course, we'll be changed in the twinkling of an eye. The calling of the Jews takes place. <coughs> Antichrist is revealed. And he said, Antichrist is not Rome. 
you know, but some future Antichrist who will be revealed. And then, of course, there'll be the Battle of Armageddon. And I, uh, you, I wish I... You, actually, once again, if you want to read my paper on this, uh, it was published by uh, uh, Tim LaHaye and the pre-trib people. It's on their webpage. Just Google my name, William Watson, and Rapture, and it should be the first thing coming up on Google. Uh, the, another paper I presented with them was on the expectation of the restoration of Israel. Just Google William Watson and Israel, and it should be the very first thing that you see. Um, anyway, three comings. Uh, see, uh, well, so we think of the rapture as two comings, but um, there's the Lord's coming at the saints' resurrection, uh, the Jews' conversion, the consternation of the wicked, re revealing of the man of sin, and his destruction. But anyway, uh, <laughs> moving on. Thomas Vincent, Oxford grad, rector in London. Many of these men were very prominent in London during the Cromwellian period, the interregnum. But when the Stuarts came back in 1660 to 1662, they were ejected. Because you had to be a high church Anglican to keep your job. And many of them were Puritan preachers. Um, uh, the rapture of the righteous, others left behind, and then comes the great terror. I would call it tribulation. The righteous suddenly caught up together in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, which sight will be fearful and amazing to them when they perceive themselves to be left behind. Oh, the fear and trouble which will be on the spirits of those unbelieving, Christless, graceless sinners. Boy, he'd be a great preacher now. Think about that. Um, some of them linked to the nearest relations to them when their believing relations shall be caught up away from them and carried up into the air with the rest of the glorious train of saints when themselves, they themselves shall be, remain below upon the earth. Suppose that the heavens should now just open up, just now, and your loved ones were taken and you were left behind. What would you do? Imagine that, that going on in... Uh, actually, I think this was written about 1655. Oh, 1667, after he was ejected. That's interesting. Um, anyway, and think of the terror that would befall upon you because you've been left behind, and now you have to face the tribulation. Samuel Hutchison. He actually was the brother-in-law of uh, Anne Hutchison. She got herself in a lot of trouble in Boston for leading, women's, leading Bible studies and teaching men. Puritans didn't agree with that. Anyway, and she actually ended up uh, being kicked out and she went to Rhode Island. Then she came back again and preached. I, I don't know if you know who Anna Hutchison is. As a church historian, she's quite a, that's a great lecture and the students always like hearing her story. But anyway, um, but this is actually her brother-in-law, the brother of her husband, of course. And he teaches a tribulation, but in the midst of the tribulation, a rapture, then you've got the last half of the tribulation with the Battle of Armageddon and everything after the rapture, notice. When you see the peop God's people in such distress as never was known in the world, then you may look for Christ's appearance. Uh, when the church is in great distress, Christ will appear and rescue us from that distress. Um, uh, we must expect Christ's coming, before which Antichrist will never be utterly destroyed. The saints shall be gathered together, uh, trumpet, whatnot. And then after the rapture is the great battle of Armageddon. So... Now, I haven't yet had anyone with seven years. I'm looking for a seven-year tribulation. No, actually, I have. It's coming, so don't worry. Um, Hutchison's double appearance of Christ. Once again, the idea that there's a, Christ comes for the rapture at a time of peace, catching people unawares, and then he returns with the church at a time of the Battle of Armageddon, that double coming. And I mean, if I look at Scripture, it's the only proper way to even begin to understand that. And they were picking up this same thing. Uh, and he separated the glorious and spiritual appearance of Christ for the rapture and his personal appearance at a time of troubles and, and the battle of Armageddon. Two appearances with a time in between. And of course, he even also refers to Noah and to Lot in Sodom being rescued from the dis be just before the destruction, just like the church will be rescued just before the destruction. Secret rapture and calling of the Jews. When you shall see the signs of the heavens following the great tribulations upon the earth, the nearer we may expect the coming of the Lord. The, the church we know was to be in the wilderness 1290 days or three and a half years. Um, then Christ will appear with all of the saints and angels for the conversion of the Jews and for the bringing in of the fullness of the Gentiles. Of course, we know these days will be shortened for the elect. 
Uh, it is generally conceived that the Jews shall be converted and the fullness of the Gentiles shall be brought in before the day of judgment. I mean, the, in other words, the Jews have to be converted with a substantial time between the conversion of the Jews and the day of judgment. And the Jews have to have time to rebuild their temple and rebuild their city and for the battle of Armageddon to take place. William Hook, Oxford grad, pastor in both Massachusetts and Connecticut, and a chapel, chaplain to Cromwell during the uh, Civil War. He has the rapture, and then we're safe in heaven, three and a half year tribulation between the rapture and the second coming with the return of Christ then. And uh, there are several resurrections mentioned in scripture. Boy, it sounds like Ed Heinsohn this morning. But great troubles will follow this resurrection, a pre-trib rapture. He, this is not his words, this is just what I added here in the brackets. Uh, after a short time, which will shake the power of the beast till it come to Armageddon. The beast lives in hell upon earth the saints, anyway, uh, and of course the church will be protected, just like the children of Israel were protected when they passed through the Red Sea. Once again, God's theme of protecting his people in the midst of great tribulation. Uh, this is William Lloyd, the bishop. Um, he taught that the 70th week of Daniel has not taken place yet, and it is yet future, a seven day, but he said seven year period. I tend to think he's He's the earliest that I could find where it's got to be a seven-year period because it's the last week of Daniel after 69 weeks separated from a 70th week. Um, and he believed then that 70th week would come later. Um, William Lloyd, he, yeah, Bishop of uh, Litchfield actually, which is one of the bishop seats in cathedrals of, of England. Benjamin Marshall was actually a disciple of, of uh, the bishop, uh, rector in Gloucestershire. But he defended Bishop Lloyd after Lloyd's death uh, and it elaborated on Bishop Lloyd's idea. These 69 septenaries of years ended with Christ in, thir- in the year 32. But there's a prophetic week coming yet. However, this remaining week of the, 70, uh, the 70th week of Daniel, you might say, it's only one week only, and it's still yet future. It's deta- he de- that the angel who gave the prophecy to David, to Daniel, I'm sorry, Daniel, detached the week from the other 69 weeks. Hence, we still have another week coming the seven year tribulation. James Mason was kind of a nut. He, uh, I call him one of the first charismatics, actually uh, uh, more staid and conservative Anglicans uh, visited his church a few times and people were falling down in the aisles and, and uh, babbling incoherently. Believe it or not, maybe that was going on then too. But uh, not that I subscribe to that, but, but he, his eschatology at least has a tribulation, the papacy collapses, Christ appears, and at the appearance of Christ, the, both the rapture and the Jews are called at the same time, tying in the appearance of Christ for the rapture and the appearance of Christ in the sky where the Jews mourn. And then uh, the Jews, of course, return to Jerusalem. Jerusalem is invaded by Gog and Magog, the king of the north and the king of the south, and Christ and his church come back. It's that same theme repeated over and over and over and over again. Um, Anonymous tract in 1699, Christ will appear twice in the sky, first to gather his church, then later to judge the nations with a period of time in between. The church shall be caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. But there's another sign of Christ, another sight of Christ. He shall come a second time from the clouds of heaven to enter into his kingdom here on earth. Two separate comings. I mean, and again, if this was just one or two people, I'd say, oh, it's just a quirk. I've got, you know, 50, 60 sources all saying the same thing. It may not be exactly what Darby is. It may not be exactly your eschatological scheme, but it's the major points are there and included there. Oliver Haywood, Cambridge grad, also ejected. Boy, the uh, Stuarts kicked out a lot of great preachers when they came back and wanted to turn the Church of England into what we now know of as Anglican Episcopal. Anyway, the souls of the glorified saints shall descend and be united to their bodies and ascend back to meet the Lord in the air. The wicked will be left behind um, on their dunghill, the earth. The dead shall rise before the living are wrapped up. So we got left behind, we've got rapture. Um, um, These congregated saints shall be admitted to one place, the state of glory. They are before the throne of God. There's room enough in heaven for all the saints. In my father's house, of course, there are many mansions. Um, I love increased Mather. Everybody here, I'm sure, has heard of Increase Mather or Son Cotton Mather. Um, 
Increase Mather, Boston Puritan. Believers should long for the second coming of Christ. Boy, a great preacher he was. And I think we in our pulpit should preach that we should long for the second coming of Christ. We should look for and expect the second coming of Christ. Looking for and hastening the day of the coming of God. You must not look, only look for, not only believe that such a day will come, you must hasten to it. That is by earnestly desiring, by long wishes, longing wishes, that we should pray for the coming of the Lord. We should pray thy kingdom come. One theme that a lot of them said is, we pray thy kingdom come, which means thy kingdom hasn't come yet. We're praying that it will come, which means the kingdom is still yet to come. We're not in it now. It was a common theme. Now, I've actually read uh, 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 Alva J. McLean's Kingdoms, you know, a book where he has different aspects of the kingdom and whatnot. But I mean, the theme I see here is Christ's kingdom has not come to earth yet and it will come in the millennium. Uh, Increase Mather, has a, his scheme was the saints would be raptured into heaven before returning to earth with him to judge the world and that there would be a period of time when they would be in heaven. Increase Mather, one of, probably the greatest of Puritan preachers, was wi- is with us, I would say. Um, when Christ comes, believers shall see the king in all his glory and shall go to, with him to the land which is very far off. Heaven is the land which is far off. He assured believers that this would happen. In my father's house there are many mansions, heaven. The army, but then there'll be a time after heaven when we will come down with him. The armies of heaven will follow him, including us. We shall come, he, when he shall come to judge the world, the saints in heaven, you know, we sing the saints come marching in. Don't we believe that one day the saints, after the rapture, will come marching in? And if we come from heaven with Christ, we've got to get to heaven before Anyway, we are sure to be raised up together on that blessed day when the great God and Savior Christ shall appear and we shall ascend into heaven. We're not going to meet Christ halfway and come back with him like post-trib people say, I would say. At least that's not what Increase Mather taught. All the saints in glory then will come down from heaven after being in heaven for the marriage supper, of course. Believers shall rise out of their graves before the dispensation of judgment and then return with him again when he judges the world. Uh, more than ju- now, t- Tommy Ice talked about a, a pre-conflagration rapture, and I've run across some people that held to that pre But this is much more than just a rapture for the conflagration, and maybe a minute or two later we come back again. There has to be a lot of events in between the rapture and then the second coming. Uh, the living saints at Christ's coming shall be caught up into the air that they may escape the deluge of fire. Oh, you go, that's pre-conflagration. But this rapture of the living, the, the dead saints shall be raised, uh, they, as to their bodies, shall not be with Christ before the bodies of the saints asleep in the grave shall be with him. Uh, just as when the flood came, back to Noah again. The flood, you know, Noah's family were rescued from the flood. The flood came, and then they came back. We may not determine how long that conflagration shall last. Noah's flood continued for days and months. Uh, he, was in the whole ar- he was in the whole year in the ark. So Noah was a, a year in the ark. But he said, one clue we have, the weapons of Ezekiel's Gog are seven years in burning. Now, maybe the conflagration takes place suddenly, but there's seven years of burning before Christ comes back again. So he's, maybe he's picked up that seven years from Bishop Lloyd. But, and I, I, I mean, as I was reading these sources and I run across something like that, I go, whoa, look what I found. But... Um, Oh, here are two uh, title pages from Increase Mather's books, but we'll just keep going. Jane Lead, um, she was actually the founder of a cult, the Philadelphians. I don't know if you've heard of that group before. Um, but, but she ta- also taught a rapture to heaven uh, where the church is glorified, is installed in their positions. Uh, many of them actually talked about where the Christians get their rewards according to their works while this takes place and maybe we're given different ranks in the Lord's army, uh, is what some of them speculate. Uh, And of course, then the marriage supper of the Lamb takes place, the tribulation is going on down on earth, and then Christ and the church in his train descend to rule during the millennium. Uh, This, I haven't been able to find, uh, whether it's Margaret or Mary Marson, but another female author, boy, these female eschatologists. (laughs) Uh, anyway, uh, I, most people speculate that she was a Quaker because she was able to speak in church and only the Quakers allowed women to speak in church back then. Um, but um, these last days of the rapture, Israel's 
last days they return to Canaan, and Canaan once again becomes a great place. And the great, then the great plagues are poured out upon the earth. Gog and Magog show up in Israel. Uh, after the Lord's coming, most of the great plagues will be poured upon the earth. After the Lord's coming, that's the coming for the rapture, I would say. Then the plagues are poured out. Um, that the beast and the false prophet will, will be taken alive. And uh, anyway, um, what you see is, diff- is the latter days of Israel's trouble, which is the, during the tribulation. Um, God will make good his great and glorious promises to Israel, calling of the Jews. Um, Gog and Magog is not till after Israel's glorious reestablishment. But Israel is not going to be disto- established till the church is taken out. So the church is taken out, Israel is established. Uh, then you've got Gog and Magog coming to take Israel. Um, and then after that is the great resurrection of all the dead, not just the church. Um, Robert Fleming the Younger, Presbyterian minister in London, about 1700. There, there's a prior and special revelation, a reward for, the, this is a partial rapture, I would say, a reward for the most eminent Christian witnesses. He gets that in Revelation where the martyrs who were uh, uh, under the, the altar, I think it was, that were beheaded. Anyway, um, uh, and he ties in, in another passage, he ties in, Paul says in Philippians, not that I've achieved it yet, but that, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not a great preacher and a Bible scholar, I'm just a historian, but, but he said that, that basically he's referring to the resurrection of the dead, that he has not really earned. So Robert Fleming says that perhaps in the rapture only the martyrs and those who've achieved something in order to be able to have the resurrection of the dead Will, will be resurrected in the rapture, and they're the ones who will rule with Christ, not the whole church. Again, I'm not advocating this, I'm just saying this is what I've discovered, uh, that it, this will be a special prize that even the Apostle Paul didn't think he'd achieved yet, um, a reward only for a few. So, so it, I mean, they even have partial rapture, they have mid-trib rapture. I've run across Robert Prudham, Baptist minister in Yorkshire, he died in 1708, so I would say 1690s, 1700s, probably used at his height. A rapture from the tribulation before the second coming to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And while the marriage supper is going on, the battle of Armageddon is raging down below. Um, a little before the second appearance of Christ, uh, exceeding great misery, the tribulation, those that are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb, the saints are glorified, the saints are changed, they're caught up. Uh, then the return of the Jews happens again to Israel. Um, and, um, and then he says that the, uh, the little horn is both papal and Mahatman, maybe the two, anyway. Uh, so maybe the, the Muslims and the Catholics, I, I get some of that in some of their sources, uh, will want to destroy the Jews who've returned to their own land. But of course they don't get the opportunity because Messiah comes. John Hildrop, that's my time. <gasps> I'm over. Uh, I could go on and on. You get the same theme. I get John Floyer, Joseph Perry, John Asgill, Nathaniel Markwick, Sayer Rudd, uh, Morgan Edwards. Morgan Edwards, ever, after I've discovered these people, I find that someone discovered them before us. Uh, Tommy Ice discovered Morgan Edwards before me. Um, so I've got to give him credit, but maybe, well, maybe he discovered it independently, but he beat me to it by a couple of years. Grantham Killingworth. There's such great stuff. I wish I could share them with you, but... Uh, how long the tribulation will be. Uh, Let's make this my conclusion. William Sherwin implored all Christians, the time is short, the great and terrible day draws near. The signs given by our Lord in part are coming to pass. The great wars and rumors of wars in the world, the great earthquakes in diverse places. May we now conclude that this generation shall not pass before all these things take place? He thought he was in the last generation. He wasn't. Um, Lift up your heads for the day of your redemption draweth nigh. And the last one, I'll do one more. James Bichonneau, great ending. Um, The early Christians lived in constant expectation of the speedy coming of their Lord. But age succeeding age and this promised coming still being delayed, the order of expectation has died away. I think that's happened in in the church today. Oh, maybe the Lord's not coming. We thought he was coming in, you know, the 60s or 70s, during the Jesus movement. You know, we were all excited about the Lord coming back. Um, um, however, pretentious seems sufficient to rouse the sleeping church. If anyone is induced from the signs of the times to conclude that the promised event is near and will venture to avow his sentiments that I think the Lord is coming back soon, he must be content to be stigmatized as a visionary and enthusiast. And this is not only by the scoffing infidel, but by those who have the same Lord. 
the same faith, the same baptism, who make fun of us because we believe the Lord is coming back soon. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. Bishano also, I've got a quote, it's later, and I don't have time to go over more, but he said, one of these days the Jews will return to their land and it will be so much evidence that all the prophecies of the, of the, of the Old Testament are true that everybody will believe. And now the Jews are not only in their own land, but they're encompassed by enemies who want to destroy them. And still we don't believe that the biblical prophecies are true. 